as we look at functions of the form x to some power and their derivatives, there seems to be a pattern to what we're seeing. Consider the following. What if f of x is simply x to the fourth and we want to know what is the derivative of f? Well, of course, we can start with the limit definition of the derivative, and that's the limit as h goes to zero of the difference of f of x plus h and f of x, all of that, over h. Now, contextualizing this limit for this particular function, we would have the limit as h goes to zero, again, of some fraction here, formed by f of x plus h. Well, what does f do? It just takes its input and raises it to the fourth power. So this had better be the input of x plus h to the fourth power minus f of x, which is identically that, all of that over h. Okay. Now, of course, we cannot uh, consider this immediately as a quotient of limits because the denominator in the limit as h goes to 0 itself goes to 0. And so we have to find some other way. We, of course, hope that this factor of h somehow cancels off with a factor above. And to that end, we try to simplify. Uh, what is above, so we might express it in factored form. And that's where this gets interesting. How do we expand x plus h to the fourth when we're uh, simplifying our numerator here? Well, you may recall certain small powers of binomials. Um, for example, I'll start really small here. a plus b to the first is, of course, a plus b. Uh, a plus b to the second, it's probably one you've committed to memory, that of course is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. a plus b to the third, maybe you have that one committed as well, that's a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed, and of course all these could be justified by just simply multiplying this out, foiling it all out. And we could do the same thing for a binomial to the fourth power. And if we did, we would discover that this is a to the fourth plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed and finally plus b to the fourth. Now you may see a pattern here that we can exploit to find larger powers of a plus b. In particular, if you write each one of these as has been done here, where the powers on a descend and the powers on b increase, then the coefficients you see, 1, 1 in the first case, 1, 2, 1 in the second, 1, 3, 3, 1 in the third, and finally 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 in the last one. These adhere to a really nice pattern. This is Pascal's triangle that we're developing. So that's one way you could uh, find higher powers here of a plus b. The trick, of course, in Pascal's triangle is that every number is the sum of the two numbers directly above it. So 6 is the sum of 3 and 3, 2 is the sum of 1 and 1, 4 is the sum of 3 and 1, and so on. So the next one here would be 1, because there's always 1s on the side. 1 and 4 is 5, 4 and 6 is 10, 6 and 4 is 10, 4 and 1 is 5, and then a 1 on the end there. But there is another way to do it without having to flesh out the entire Pascal's triangle up to the row in question. Think about how you actually multiply out a plus b to the fourth. This is the product of four a plus b factors, right? And to generate any of the terms resulting from multiplying all of this out, you need to select a term from the first factor, a term from the second factor, a term from the third factor, and a term from the last factor. For example, a to the fourth comes from choosing an a from each of these factors and multiplying them together. You could also produce an a cubed b by choosing an a from three of the factors and a b from the remaining one. 
Of course, this can be done in four different ways, as the remaining B might have been the one from the first factor, or the one from the second, or the one from the third, or the one from the fourth. Hence this coefficient of 4. In a similar manner, to create an a squared b squared term, two of the factors must contribute an a, and two of the factors must contribute a b. How many ways can you take four things and choose two of them to contribute the b's? Well, this is a question from probability, where there is a well-defined idea that can answer exactly that question, the idea of combinations. We write n choose k when we mean the number of ways you can take n things and select k of them. Here we have four things, and we wish to choose two of them to contribute b's, and so this value should match up with the coefficient over here. There are indeed six ways to do this. If you're curious, I've listed them up here. So this equals 6, that number right there. In general, each one of these coefficients can be represented as something of this form. And that's the meat of the binomial theorem which states, if you want to expand a plus b to the n, you're going to start with a single a to the n, and then you're going to have, and again notice the pattern here, 2, 3, 4, for n is 2, 3, 4, n times a to the n minus 1 power, so you've dropped the power on a by 1, and you've picked up a b, that's consistent with these three terms here, plus, and then the rest of these can be found with combinations combination of n things taken two at a time so that we're contributing two b's and of course the remainder of the a's and take three things at a time so that we find three b's and the rest a's and so on, on all the way down the line. This first one here of course would be n things take one at a time in terms of combinations. Of course if we're just selecting one thing from a group of n, how many ways can we do that? That's n. Okay, so we can always use the binomial theorem to expand such things as x plus h to the fourth, or x plus h to any positive integer power. Right, that's the condition there. So in doing so, we would have x to the fourth plus 4x cubed times a single h, plus 6x squared, h squared, again we're just following the form we had over here as well, plus 4x h cubed, and finally plus h to the fourth. Remember that's just this piece, maybe we wrap it in parentheses, minus this little piece, x to the fourth, and then all of that is over h. Let's move this out of the way for the moment. And for that matter, let's get rid of all this red stuff here. I don't think we're going to need it right now. Now, what happens here? In the numerator, notice x to the fourth minus x to the fourth cancels off when we try to simplify. And that gives us the limit as h goes to zero of looking at the numerator here, a bunch of terms that all have a single factor or more of h associated with them. Well that's great because that means we can pull that common factor of h out of the numerator. So we have 4x cubed plus 6x squared, and notice we only pulled a single h out there so we still have one left, plus 4x and here again we would have two h's left, and here h cubed over h. Okay, now of course we are free to cancel the h's, creating a new function that differs from the old function only at one point and at a point that we don't technically care about, so that we can evaluate this limit as h goes to zero. Notice this is a polynomial in h, and as such, to evaluate the limiting value, we simply plug h equals zero in. But look what happens here when we plug h equals zero in. 
we still have 4x cubed. Right? We're not plugging it in for x. When we plug h equals 0 in here, that 0 times 6x squared, would, that's just 0. That kills that term off. Plus 4x times 0 squared. Again, that's just 0. It goes away. Plus 0 cubed. Well, that's just 0. In fact, if I have a factor of h associated with the term, that term disappears. So I just have 4x cubed. Now, where did that guy come from? It came from back here. It came from back here, right? The form of this second guy right here. The first guy got canceled off. Okay? This happens in general. Look, we can modify this to be a proof of how the derivative of x to any n behaves. Okay? The derivative still equals this. That's the limit definition of the derivative. When we make our replacements, f of x plus h changes from x plus h to the fourth to x plus h to the n, as does that changes to x to the n. When we come down here and expand it, recall, we can use the binomial theorem here. So this changes to all of this, again, drawing directly from the binomial theorem. And don't forget, you have to subtract off an x to the n here on the end. That's that term right there. All of that over h. Now the x to the n minus the x to the n will still cancel. And that's going to leave for us all of these terms. Now the actual number values of n choose 2 and n choose 3 and so on turns out not to be very important because what's going to happen? Notice every single one of these terms has an h on it. I can pull that h on the outside to get the following. These h's cancel. And now what's left, remember, n choose 2 is just a number, n choose 3 is just a number, is a polynomial in terms of h. And to, so to evaluate the limit, all I've got to do is plug h equals 0 in, and what happens to this term, and this term, and all of these terms, and this term, when h is 0? They go away. So, just to move this out of the way and give myself a little more room here, let's scroll this up a little bit, okay? we have simply that term, right? That's the only thing that's left. n times x to the n minus 1. Now if we simply annotate up here a little bit by say, saying that uh, this expansion resulted by uh, applying the binomial theorem, we now have a proof of how to find derivatives of x to the n provided, now this is important, remember we just applied the binomial theorem here and the binomial theorem required that the power we're talking about is a positive integer. So we have proven that the derivative of this should be this provided n was a positive integer. Okay, we have proven what is called the power rule. Okay. Now, how has this worked in practice? Well, if you have a function like g of x, and it's x to the 17th, and you want to know what g prime of x is, well, you don't have to go through this anymore using the limit definition of the derivative, which would involve expanding a binomial to the 17th power, which you probably don't want to do. Instead, you can apply this and say, well, all i got to do is bring the old power down in front and my new power is one less than my old power, so I drop my power by one. And that's the derivative. That's it.